Uh, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Julia Plaxina and I will help to moderate today's webinar, Palm Oil uh, Price Trends 2021, Market Expectation and Sentiments. Thank you very much for joining us today. And before we move to presentation, there are a few keeping uh, there are a few housekeeping points I would like to cover. At the bottom of the webinar screen, you should see a toolbar. Please use the toolbar to get access to a range of applications, uh, such as speaker biographies, webinar materials, technical support, and also if you would like to request a demo or free trial. Uh, click on an application and it, and it should open on your screen. And all applications are movable and resizable, so please feel free to move them around to get the most out of your screen space. If you have any questions, please submit your questions on a Q&A box and our speakers and moderator will try to answer your questions at the end of our webinar. For the best viewing experience, we highly recommend to close any other programs or browser sessions running in the background. And the webcast is being streamed throughout your computer, so for the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset volume is turned up. Some networks cause slides to advance more slowly than others, so logging off your VPN is highly recommended. If your slides are behind, please push F5 on your keyboard, and this will help to refresh your page. A recording of the webinar will be sent uh, to all attendees within upcoming days. We really value feedback, so please do complete the pop-up survey at the end of our webinar. And if you would like to receive a free palm oil market report by our Refinity Research and also our forecast team, please also complete uh, a pop-up survey on the right side of your window. Again, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And over to you, Faisal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Uh, very good morning or afternoon to our delegates, depending on wherever you are participating from. Uh, between Dr. KP, Ahmed, and I, we will be covering uh, the topics of global palm oil market overview and trends, palm oil market outflow risk and opportunities, and impact of COVID-19 challenges and opportunities. I hope all of you enjoy the session. Uh, you all, like Julia just explained, you can ask your questions and we'll take the Q&A right at the end. So before further ado, I will start my presentation on the global palm oil market overview, trends, and forecast for 2021. Let me... Okay. Um, I'm sorry, the slides were running a bit slow for my computer, but anyways, I hope you guys can see the uh, first slide that we are on. Uh, let's look at the key market developments in the last three months, which have had an immediate impact on trade um, or likely to have an impact on the trade in the coming months. The most important development in the last three months that has changed uh, is the change in the duty and tariffs in both importing and exporting countries. Uh, on December 10th, Indonesia adopted a progressive um, export duty structure and uh, to support their B30 uh, biodiesel program. And on the current prices, the applicable levy on C2 export is USD 255 per ton and export duty is $93 per ton. That comes to about a total impact of USD 348 dollars per ton. Um, and uh, we believe that the new base rate for April duty structure is also to be announced soon by the Indonesian authorities. The next, um, on the 1st of Jan, Malaysia reinstated the export duty, 8% uh, duty, which comes to an approximate of $75 uh, in money value, was reinstated after a break of six months from uh, June to December 2020. So keeping this in view, it seems that, you know, it's actually Malaysian CPO right now is placed at uh, an advantage over Indonesian CPO. But you know, those who understand uh, the uh, levy structure in Indonesia, you must know that the way the uh, levy structure is designed, it incentivizes the exports of the refined products from Indonesia. So 
the Malaysian suppliers of uh, refined oil will be uh, at uh, a disadvantage when they go into the export market. So this is a situation which uh, would have an impact on the overall export and trade. Uh, coming to the import structure in the buying countries, India, uh, as we all know that India reviews its duty and structure quite often based on the prices, uh, you know, they review it periodically. But usually the changes in terms of uh, the percentage going up or down. Uh, but this time around, on uh, the 1st of Feb, uh, the in India revised its import duty structure and introduced Agriculture, Infrastructure and Development CES, AIDC, of 17.5%. Now this, uh, uh, in turn, they also reduced the import duty levels. But for instance, if we take the example of CPO, the duty of CPO, which used to be 30.25% before this change, is now 35.25%. And the advantage that uh, CPO enjoyed uh, in uh, uh, India was about 8.25% over soft oil, which has been reduced to 2.75%. And this is a very significant change when it comes to uh, uh, calculating the landed cost. Um, anyways, uh, we'll discuss about this a bit further in later part of the presentation. Looking at the production of CPO in Malaysia, uh, the production for the month of Jan has registered a reduction of 15.5% when compared to December 2020. Um, yeah. And uh, the exports of palm oil from Malaysia also registered a serious decline in January of 14% as compared to December. Um, I need to just double check if uh, I'm uh, on the right slide because I think my slides are running one slide slow. Um, anyways, yeah, so talking about the uh, production and export. So uh, the export numbers for Jan, as I was saying, for Malaysia are showing uh, a decline, showed a decline, but it's already picking up in February. In the first 15 days data uh, from uh, some of the sources indicate that the exports are showing an increase of almost 27 percent. Similar trend is also seen in Indonesian exports. Uh, there was a decline of 25 percent in January and this is uh, primarily because um, the um, exports in November and December were very high, both from Malaysia and Indonesia, because buyers moved their shipment shipments from January to early to avoid the taxes. So, but uh, February forward, the exports are picking up and we foresee that this trend continues. Uh, talking about the price of Brent crude, uh, it's already hovering between $62 was the price on the 14th of December. But uh, what we believe that price is already picking up uh, right now is between $64, $65. And it seems like in the near foreseeable future, the price is going to maintain this level, uh, which is going to be uh, uh, an interesting factor to see uh, for countries to maintain and determine their blending mandates. All right, looking at the palm oil production analysis, uh, as uh, you guys you know, you know that palm oil is the largest produced and consumed edible oil in the world. And if you look at the production growth of palm oil over the years, we see that uh, palm oil production has registered growth every year, year on year, in the last 10 years that we can see here. And even if you go back to historical data, we see that minus uh, the major weather incidents, palm oil production has always grown consistently. And uh, looking at this 10-year chart, we see that uh, the production decline in 2016, which was because of El Nino and its impact. And again, in 2020, it declined from 76.67% uh, of 2019 to 73.66% in 2020, which was because of combination of factors, uh, some uh, weather effect of La Nina, there was flooding. Um, there was, in Malaysia, there was shortage of labor. There was delay in harvesting because of lockdowns. But again, it is forecasted that in 2021, the production will recover further, and we'll see an overall uh, production of 76.8 million tons per CPO. Looking at the imports, 
the input analysis of palm oil. Palm oil is also the largest traded uh, edible oil in the world uh, with an uh, average export of 55 million tons in 2019. Um, again, uh, the import of palm oil has also shown a similar trend. It's, it's grown consistently in the last five years from 44 million, 44.8 million tons in 2016 to almost 55 million tons in 2019. Uh, there's a decline in 2020 because of obvious reasons uh, and the COVID-related restrictions. So we have just given the percentage value of the few major imported regions and markets. Uh, you can see that these, uh, like, you know, for instance, Sub-Saharan Africa, EU, India, China, Asia Pacific, in terms of percentage, uh, you can see that these markets uptake has also increased consistently over the years. India alone, uh, contributes to about 18 to 20 percent of the total trade of palm oil. Uh, similarly, EU constitutes about 17 percent. Uh, India, China, uh, Asia Pacific, all in the range of 4, 12, 13, 14 percent. So collectively, these four regions uh, accumulate to about nearly 50, more than 50 percent of the total trade of palm oil. Taking a deeper dive into the Malaysian palm oil export summary for 2020. So total exports of palm oil in uh, uh, 2020 of Malaysia showed a decline of 1.5 million tons, which was nearly 6% uh, from uh, the same period of 2019. And uh, if you look at the main regions that we have categorized for our exports, which is uh, Indian subcontinent, Middle East, Africa, Europe, besides Middle East and Africa, all other regions have declared uh, uh, a decline in imports in 2020. As we all know that in 2020, the entire world, all the countries went through various degrees of lockdowns, some for a few months, some for a longer period of the year. And the biggest impact of these lockdowns was on the horeca and the catering sector. And palm oil being the preferred choice for this sector was adversely hit. There was a direct impact. We also first, uh, we also saw that there was um, uptake. Like you know, there was more cooking at home. People were more working from home. Uh, kids were schooling from home. So there was an increase in uh, food intake at home. But the direct beneficiary of that trend was soft oil because uh, that's uh, 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 that's where soft oil has uh, more usage at home. So. Uh, but the silver lining here, if you look at the value of exports in 2020 for Malaysia was 48.89 billion ringgit, which is an increase of 7.4%. And thanks to the uh, higher average price of palm oil uh, in 2020. If you look at the top exports destinations for Malaysia in 2020 again, uh, and I would say it's just not Malaysia. These are the, the biggest buyer of palm oil, uh, uh, wherever it is coming from. So we can see China, India, Netherlands, Pakistan, you know, these are the 1 million ton club people. And then the top 10 buyers alone contribute to nearly 60% of the total trade for Malaysia. And, and I would assume that the same trend follows for Indonesia and uh, other exporting countries. So, you know, one thing too important to note from this trend is that uh, any geopolitical change, any uh, change in major change in tariff, whether be it uh, from India, China, or exporting countries, it has a direct impact on the supply and demand dynamics. And, you know, it turns out and also impacts the price going forward. So uh, uh, these are some of the major players and, uh, and the policies and the tariffs or uh, other conditions in these markets have a direct impact in the overall uh, oils and fats uh, um, market. Now, looking at the CPI outlook and major market projections uh, in 2021, we'll focusing on the first half of 2021. So, both uh, the production of CPI in Malaysia and Indonesia showed a reduction in 2020. According to the MBOB stats, 
Malaysian CPA production declined from 19.9 million tons in 2019 to 19.1 million tons in 2020. And we forecast that uh, the production of CPO in 2021 will be approximately 19.6 million tons, an increase of uh, 400 to 500,000 tons. The Indonesian production of CPO for 2021, uh, I would say that your guess is as good as mine. Recently, we concluded uh, POTS Digital, one of our uh, 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 big virtual conference, and we had the top five analysts presenting their uh, projections and forecast. And for Indonesian production, all of them had uh, various projections varying from 44 million tons to 50 million tons. But we uh, anticipate that Indonesian production of CPO in 2021 would be approximately 45 million metric tons. And taking a deeper dive into the projected Malaysian CPO situation for 2021, how does the balance sheet look? So. Uh, like you said, uh, Malaysian CPO production is anticipated to be 19.6 million tons. The export of CPO uh, is likely to increase by 10% from Malaysia, from 4.4 million tons to 4.8 million tons uh, uh, in 2020. And the reason is, uh, you know, uh, the Malaysian CPO right now is better placed in the market. It's competitive over Indonesian CPO because of the levies. And this again, we anticipate that the uh, duty and tariff, Indone Indonesian duty and tariff do not change, which is uh, unlikely, at least for the uh, immediate future. So looking at the average uptake of the Malaysian refining industry, which is in the range of 15.5 to 15.6 million tons, there'll be a deficit of CPO within Malaysia. And uh, that probably would be met by imports. And you know, this, this uh, supply and demand scenario is likely to create a low month ending stock for much of 2021. And uh, we foresee that the monthly stocks in Malaysia would range trend between, uh, you know, below 1.5 million tons. And uh, the entire mix uh, is a classic scenario for higher CPO prices uh, for the first part of 2021, or it's safe to say for most part of 2021. Before I conclude, um, I would like to give a quick uh, review of the in, in three major markets or movers and shakers of uh, uh, palm oil, like we discussed earlier. So for India, the palm oil imports in India declined by 24% in 2020. Uh, overall imports of oils and fats declined in India. Uh, but palm oil was worst hit with a decline of 24%, again, because of the reduced demand coming from the horeca sector. The total edible oil imports in the first half of 2021 are projected to be 7 million metric tons. It's hard to put a number on the palm oil imports for 2021 first half, even first half, because right now, the situation is very fluid. A lot depends on the landed cost of palm oil with competing soft oils. If And then as we uh, discussed that the competitive advantage of CPO has reduced by 5.5% from 8 to 8.25 to 2.75. And uh, that reduces the attractiveness of palm oil over soybean. Uh, um, so that would be a key factor in India, and you'll see how it plays out. Uh, China, uh, oils and fats demand in 2021 will see higher growth uh, in the Q1 uh, and year on year basis because the catering sector is recovering uh, nicely. This was the time back in 2020 Q1 when China was the worst hit. They were the first one to uh, get the uh, worst brunt of pandemic. But we foresee as uh, palm oil import will also see uh, an increase, a positive growth in Q1 of 2021 but probably will see slowing down in Q2 uh, of the same year. And that's because the, there's a very strong recovery of demand for soybean meal from livestock industry. Uh, if, if we look, talk about the uh, first half of 2021, it is estimated that the total uh, demand and import of palm oil is going to stay flat. Uh, last year, Jan, June 2020, the total import of palm oil was about 2.6 million tons, and we estimate that it will probably maintain the same level this year also. EU, um, 
you was first hit with COVID-19 last year uh, and in this year also so far more than 28 million infections and nearly 700,000 fatalities. Total palm oil imports are projected to reach about 4 million tons for the first half of 2021. Um, and uh, palm oil imports are uh, also uh, at the same level of last year to reach about 1 million tons for 2021 first half. Uh, this is also, uh, you know, the situation in the EU is also evolving. Uh, they, there are some countries adopting the uh, uh, early adoption of Delegated Act and uh, um, restricting the use of palm oil in their biodiesel. So if that trend uh, continues and picks up, then we might see a further decline uh, in palm oil imports in the EU. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll uh, conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. And I uh, give the time to Dr. KP now. At least a definitive, a subsidiary for the London Stock Exchange Group. So today I'm going to talk about the palm oil market outlook uh, and what are the risks and opportunities this year in 2021. So here is an overview of what's going on in the palm oil market. So as we know, palm oil futures has been on the rally okay, since the second half of last year. So basically there are a few reasons behind the price rally as listed here. Uh, the first one is a tight surprise and stronger demand for, for palm oil and been an economic recovery. And the palm oil market has also been tracking a bullish momentum in the global vegetable oil market. And lastly is the, the Indonesian government raised export duties and export levies. So, and that had also provided supports for palm oil prices as well. And uh, I'm going to discuss this further in my following slides. And in terms of our palm oil production outlook, we expect to see palm oil production in 2020-21 to be below potential. So I just wanted to highlight the two largest palm oil producers here, Malaysia and Indonesia, um, which account for around 85% of the world's production. And their production are expected to be 19.1 million tons and 46 million tons respectively. And we believe that there are some challenges will keep the production to below potential. Um, one of the limiting factors that I want to mention here is the labor shortages, um, especially in Malaysia. So where, where the COVID-19 um, has caused travel and movement restrictions since last year. Um, as we all know in Malaysia, palm oil productions or the palm oil plantation relies heavily on the foreign labels. Around or almost about 70% of the plantation workforce are actually from the foreign workers. So with the absence of the skilled workers, uh, there are many operations such as the harvesting uh, and also the estate upkeep uh, were already disturbed. So, so this has caused some production losses and the poorer oil quality. Um, and many plantations have also carried out the COVID-19 test now for their estate workers. So some estates and palm oil mills um, uh, actually shut down temporarily after their workers were found infected by COVID-19. So some plantation also um, restrict their workers from going outside. Uh, so, so all this actually uh, raised some concerns over the supply chain. Uh, and well, for Indonesia, operation in most states um, remain stable as there are no major supply concerns due to COVID-19 over there. Um, so this is another challenge for palm oil production, so, uh, which is the adverse weather uh, brought by the rainy season or, or, or this one, uh, a La Nina event. So um, here are some photos taken uh, during, during January. So basically, uh, you can see the plantations were affected by severe flooding uh, across Malaysia and Indonesia, especially in the key producing states like Johor, Sabah, Sarawak. Uh, Pahang, and for Indonesia, it's Kalimantan Selatan, Kalimantan Barat, Kalimantan Selatan, Sumatra Selatan, and flooding in low-lying areas basically had a uh, disrupted harvest activities and logistics. Therefore, um, the production in Malaysia and Indonesia uh, in the January 
last month were actually quite weak. Um, and some estate roads were also damaged by the heavy and persistent rainfall as well. So, and some, some places even had um, landslides and that will also require some time to repair the infrastructure. And fortunately, rainfall has begun to slow down recently. Um, this is the weather outlook for March until May. So basically, the western regions like um, Sumatra, Peninsula Malaysia should be monitored for potential dryness, um, while above normal rainfall is likely along the eastern sites or eastern regions like Sabah and the east side of Kalimantan. So overall, this weather outlook um, represents a slowdown of rainfall, which should benefit harvest activities and logistics um, in most of the areas uh, during March until May. Okay, now let's move on to the, the demand side of things. So here I highlight um, palm oil imports from top three destinations, India, EU, and China. Um, which account for around 45% of the global palm oil imports. So generally, imports from India and China in 2020-2021 are expected to improve relative to the last marketing year with the exception of EU. Um, we believe that palm oil imports from India and China are expected to rise, uh, mainly driven by the growth in edible oil consumption a gradual economy recovery and restocking activities. By contrast, EU palm oil imports will likely weigh down by some EU's policies, um, anti-palm oil campaigns, and, and also the COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the reasons that we believe that India will likely increase palm oil imports this year is due to their low vegetable oil inventories. Um, as you can see in this chart, India palm oil stocks were at a very low level, around 400,000 tons as of uh, December 2020, or down almost 40% uh, versus December in 2019. And coupled with a global recovery in demand, um, therefore we believe that restocking could be on the horizon. Um, also, palm oil is still cheaper compared to other soft oils, so that would potentially attract some buying interest. Um, however, there are some caveats that bear watching in this case. Um, the first one is the higher than normal rainfall in India during um, the last monsoon season. Uh, this will likely raise the domestic oil seed production. So if verifies um, higher domestic output will mean they could lower their imports. So uh, this is the first. Um, secondly, is the early this month India announced a new import duty structure during the federal budget presentation. So in short, um, India has narrowed the duty gap between palm oil and other soft oils to 2.75% from 8.25% previously. Um, so that could potentially affect some purchases in the, in the coming month. Um, Next, we believe that the rapid recovery of China's economy will keep demand steady. So, in fact, China pumps oil imports picked up um, since the second half of last year after the lockdowns there. So, in China, palm oil is still preferred by the food manufacturing and uh, commercial sectors um, due to its uh, cost effectiveness and versatile nature. Um, also, it has been widely used in the process of uh, making instant noodles, frozen foods, snacks, and et cetera, which were highly consumed in China last year, and we believe the same uh, this year as well. Um, however, the caveats... Oh, sorry. However, the caveats in this case um, is China's soybean imports. Okay, so uh, as you may already know, China's soybean imports have surged to very high levels um, uh, due to in line with their rising uh, hogs populations. So uh, basically, soybean will be crushed to produce soy meal, uh, which is the feedstock for hogs. And the byproducts, soybean oil, will uh, compete with uh, palm oil in the market. So therefore, 
uh, we think that the domestic production of soybean oil in China should bear watching. So next, um, in terms of the EU's palm oil imports, we believe that the COVID-19 pandemic and the EU's policies will curb uh, palm oil imports. So basically, uh, many European countries will impose lockdowns and demand has been slashed, especially in the horeca sector. Um, there are some EU's policies are not in favour of palm oil, such as the uh, EU's Renewable Energy Directive 2. Uh, basically, the palm oil biodiesel will be gradually phased out um, from 2023 until 2030. So um, EU also set the new... Uh, food safety standards to limit the 3MCBD and GE. Uh, these are the contaminants uh, found in the refined palm oil. So in short, um, these uh, EU's policies will likely curb the palm oil, palm oil imports. Um, however, we think that there are some bright spots uh, in this case. So one of the reasons that keeps the EU palm oil imports quite stable so far um, it is it's because of the shortfall in the rapeseed surprise. Uh, as you may already know, like EU rapeseed production has been disappointed for three years running. So, EU needs to import other soils to to uh, to fill out the gap, and also cheaper CPO prices uh, relative to other vegetable oils and rising biodiesel blending. That is also benefit of EU palm oil imports. So, in terms of our palm oil market outlook. And in the first place, we believe that um, fundamentals are still healthy, as reflected in the lower palm oil inventories, uh, which keep the palm market remain supported in the short term. So if we look at the palm oil inventories, you can see that Malaysia palm inventories are very low, Okay, with ending stocks at around 1.3 million tons in January 2021, uh, which was the second lowest level since year 2004. Um, as for Indonesia, basically Indonesia palm oil inventories were relative high, but uh, the inventories had dwindled by 19% for the peak of 6 million tons in October 2020 to 4.9 million tons in December. So um, that's actually mainly led by weaker production and rising exports during this period of time. Um, secondly, we think that the palm market is also supported by biodiesel policies, especially uh, the Indonesian B30 mandate. As you can see in this chart, rising palm oil prices has widened the price spread um, between the CPO and gas oil to $450 per ton. So basically, biodiesel branding is not economically feasible for quite some time already. Um, however, the Indonesian government still continues the B30 mandate this year by raising export duty, export levies to USD $255 per ton in order to fund the mandate. So um, in short, we believe that the Indonesian's government's strong support for uh, biodiesel programs will uh, limit the downside risk for the palm market. And further support also came from mineral, mineral oil prices uh, that are currently at the highest level since January last year. So basically, the high gas oil prices uh, could lend some support to the palm-based biodiesel market as well. Um, next, uh, soybean oil market remains bullish and is already now at a seven-year high. So, in fact, um, not only soybean oil, many other vegetable oils like sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, and others are actually all, all already at the multi-year highest levels. So, that's also keep the overall vegetable oil market very firm. Um, as you can see in this chart, CPO futures have been tracking the bullish momentum in the soybean oil futures um, since the second half of last year. So although palm oil is quite expensive already, um, it is considered still cheaper than, than the rival's uh, vegetable oils. Um, CPO discounts to soybean oil is currently at $60 per ton, so it's still attractive in the vegetable oil market. Okay, next, um, 
there's a potential that Palmoyers in this season may not recover as swiftly as expected, um, mainly due to the impact of dryness in 2019. So, um, based on the rainfall charts, as you can see here, um, both Malaysia and Indonesia experienced prolonged dryness in Q3 uh, 2019 that also resulted in fires and haze, if you can remember. Um, so basically, the prolonged dryness would have a negative impact on yields, uh, usually within the two years period after the dry spell occurred. So as such, we think uh, palm oil yields could be lower than expected during Q3 this year. So if this scenario verifies lower than expected output, uh, we also likely limit downside risk for the palm market during Q3. Okay, now let's talk about our price perspective. Um, so technical analysis on the weekly CPO futures has shown some bearish signals. Uh, moving average convergent divergence or MACD crossover um, has been formed, uh, suggesting a reverse trend is in store. Um, previously, a MACD crossover was also formed during the first half of 2020. Um, leading to a downtrend for almost five months. So, and next is the RSI divergence. Here also suggested that the indicator does not agree with the price action. So basically, these are some um, bearish indicators that warrant our, our attention. All right, so finally, here are some key takeaways. Um, 2020-21, palm oil production is expected to be below potential due to um, adverse weather, labor shortages, uh, the previous dry spell in 2019, and, and many more. Okay, um, We expect the palm oil imports from key consumers like India and China to increase this season on the back of a gradual economy recovery, um, growth in consumption, uh, restocking activities, and etc. So... Um, there's also a potential uptick uh, in demand in months ahead due to a festive season celebration like um, Ramadan. Okay. And in terms of our price outlook, we believe that uh, palm oil prices will remain supportive uh, in the short term, uh, mainly on the back of a uh, firm fundamentals uh, and also the bullish vegetable oil market. Um, but in the long run, we believe that uh, pump prices will likely gradually weaken uh, over the next few months or towards Q3 this year, uh, which is the high production season. Um, here we highlight some risks that should be watched. Firstly, potential weaker appetite for palm oil. Um, high palm oil prices may curb some demand, uh, especially from price-sensitive markets uh, such as like India, um, despite their inventories are very low right now, but the high prices have already kept the buyers there very hand to mouth. Um, so this is the first risk. And secondly, South America soybean output may turn out to be higher than expected. Um, despite a dry spell in South America has already delayed planting and harvest progress. Um, but there's a still a good chance that soybean output uh, may turn out to be higher than expected uh, due to subsequent beneficial rainfalls over soybean areas in Brazil and uh, Argentina. And thirdly, um, higher oil seed prices may encourage more planting, thereby uh, this will likely weaken the prices going forward. Um, recently, the USDA has projected um, that U.S. soybean planted area will be boosted uh, to a very high level in the coming season. So, and, and also some flower planting from like Ukraine, Russia, EU are also expected to rise in the next season. Um, last but not least, um, key consuming countries may lower their palm oil imports in the event of a robust domestic uh, vegetable oil output. Uh, for example, in China, as already mentioned, uh, with the rising hogs population there, China need, will need to crush more soybean to get soy meal, uh, which is the main feedstock for hogs. 
uh, while the byproducts soybean oil will be competed uh, with palm oil in the market. So um, uh, I think that's that's all for my presentation. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, thank you. Very, thank you very much for your uh, presentation and insights. So just uh, a few, uh, just a few uh, words from my side. So dear audience, if you would like to receive uh, a free palm oil market report from our research and also forecast team, please also complete the pop up on your screen. And also I will give you like a couple of seconds to complete the survey to complete the form. Thank you again. And thank you for joining. Just a second. I will give you 10 more seconds just to make sure you have enough time to submit to the pop-up on your screen. Last few seconds. <laughs> Thank you very much for submitting the form and over to you, Ahmed. Thank you very much, Julia. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you, Refinitiv and MPOC, for organizing this webinar. Uh, it's very delightful to be speaking next to my good friend, Faisal Iqbal and uh, Mr. KP, very prominent speakers and very excellent presentations. Uh, today, I'll be talking about the impact of COVID-19 on uh, the world economy and how that has affected uh, vegetable oils and fats. It's important to understand what's going on in the world and how demand is changing and shifting in order to understand uh, the price trends and uh, supply and demand. So first we'll be looking at the global overview and then we will be we will look at the impact that it had on vegetable oils and fats. And then we're going to look at the production and consumption of vegetable oils and fats. Later on we'll be looking at challenges and opportunities and finally, we will conclude the presentation. Now, looking at this graph, uh, you will see that uh, a lot of countries are highlighted in red and pink. And that is because majority of the countries around the world have uh, gone through recession and suffered negative economic growth. Uh, the countries highlighted in red uh, have gone through negative 5%. And, and uh, those, uh, those countries in dark net, uh, red has gone through negative 15% uh, in growth. The only registered growth in uh, 2020 was in China with 2.3% uh, growth. And uh, that is for uh, because they came back to the economy earlier compared to other countries. And uh, on the bright side for this year, IMF predicts that we, there'll be a 5.2 growth in 2021. Now, what happened in 2019-2020 and how did the COVID impact the economy? Uh, 2020 has been described as the worst year since the Great Depression that took place in 1930. And that is because never the world have suffered uh, such uh, crisis uh, economically, socially, and medically in its entire existence. The whole world crumbled and were, were brought down on its knees, and it went through into panic and major lockdowns. Now, these lockdowns that were imposed uh, has caused major economic setback for major businesses, uh, and ha it has also affected the food sector. The travel restrictions and the lockdown has put tourism and travel into sleep, and this has caused major airlines to go bust. And we have seen uh, such airlines as Thai Airways, uh, British Airways, Virgin Australia, 
declaring bankruptcy. Uh, we have seen a lot of hotels uh, shutting down for the period of the lockdown, some reopening fully, some are reopening partially, and so on. As for restaurants, they were uh, also uh, had diminishing demands as more people were eating at home, and therefore there were overall uh, economic pause during that during that period. Uh, also during the this during this period, the in, the demand for energy for crude oil has dropped significantly. And therefore, the stocks for crude oil has increased uh, tremendously to record highs. Um, I read some reports that, that says that the, the stock of crude oil has increased by 400%, which is crazy. And this has caused the crude oil prices to crash in May 2020, which was followed by other oils and other commodities as well. Now, uh, let's look at the impact on uh, vegetable oils. Uh, the graph is a little bit small. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, since the start of the pandemic, uh, in uh, beginning of 2020, uh, the prices started to diminish. Of course, we are looking at four major oils, uh, palm oil, soybean oil, sunflower, and rapeseed oil. The prices started to diminish from January all the way towards uh, April, but it was going down at a, a slow pace. Uh, in quarter two, which is uh, from May onwards, that's when the lockdowns and the spreads was... Uh, was, was, the virus was spreading fast, and the whole world went into a complete lockdown, and that has caused the crude uh, crude oil price to crash, and followed by commodities. And we have seen the palm oil price drop from uh, three thousand levels to uh, less than two thousand uh, ringgit, which is about forty percent drop in price, and other uh, oils as well. In quarter three, some economies started to reopen and some lockdowns were being eased. And therefore, uh, China and India and other countries, they came back to the market and uh, they started buying aggressively to replenish their stocks. And that has caused a gave boost to the uh, prices of oils and fats. In quarter four, uh, until December, the price of oils and fats reached its record high. Uh, palm oil almost doubled. Uh, in price and other vegetable oils increased by 15 to 60 percent, and that was because of uh, lack uh, slow in production and also uh, drop in stock levels and uh, and uh, production shortages as well. Okay, looking at the overall uh, scenario, crude palm oil prices have doubled from May to December 2020. And that was due to the tightness uh, in production and limited supply of all major oils and fats. Um, um, and and uh, this tightness has been uh, spilled over into uh, January and, uh, and now February. And I, we believe that it will be carried on until uh, at least May this year. We, uh, last year, we experienced less than uh, expected production output of uh, palm oil and other oils as well. Uh, particularly palm oil was because of the La Nina and labor shortage issues that we had here in Malaysia. And uh, the world stocks of palm oil have dropped by 2.5 million. And Indonesia maintained its Bio 30 mandate, and it was planning to do a Bio 40, uh, B40 mandate in 2021, but it has been put on hold. And that also have created uh, some uh, shortage. Um, as for the other oils, there was a uh, drought in the Black Sea region, which has severely damaged the uh, sunflower seeds uh, corpse. And the uh, production of oils, uh, sunflower seeds have dropped by 2.7 million uh, tons last year due to the less yield and, uh, and low in, uh, drop in production. So we expect the the, we expect that the price for uh, sunflower oil to remain bullish until third quarter this year. Of course, this uh, high sunflower uh, oil prices have shifted demand from sunflower into soybean oil and palm oil. And rapeseed oil and canola oil have diminishing demand due to its high premium uh, over other oils. And also soybean have uh, gone through, uh, suffered through tightness. Uh, due to th drought in South America and strikes in Argentina, which sent the prices for soybean oil uh, rocket high and expected to go on until third quarter of this year. 
And recent report by USDA expects that the price of soybean oil to remain bullish until the end of this year due to diminishing stocks. Now, looking at the oils and fast production in uh, 2020 and compared to 2019, uh, for the four major oils and fats, uh, there was a drop in production uh, compared to the previous year for the reasons that we have explained earlier. Uh, these four oils, they con contribute to 76% of the oil, world's uh, oils and fats production around the world. And palm oil itself, it uh, contributes 32% of the overall oils and fats. All right, here we look at the oils and fats consumption. As you can see from the graph trend, in 2020, um, supply was sufficient to meet demand. However, uh, going forward uh, through the coming years, 2025, 2030, uh, the demand for uh, vegetable oils and fats were surpassed the production of oils and fats. Um, uh, for many reasons, one is the reviving of the economies, uh, the increase in demand for uh, food and uh, beverages, as a lot of businesses are shifting from um, uh, non-food related into food business uh, as, a, as a more lucrative business. And also you will see more demand from Horeca when uh, the economies come back and uh, travel is now no more restricted as before. Uh, we are seeing increasing demand for palm oil and vegetable oils in oleochemicals, animal feed, very high percentage and for the biofuel sector. Um, for that reason, uh, we need to, uh, producing countries need to increase their production yield. Uh, they need to increase the planting areas. And also they should find ways to store uh, oils and seeds rather than uh, uh, finding ways to get rid of them. All right, now we look at the challenges that we faced in 2019. And we need to understand these challenges to see how, uh, how we can come up from it and or how to find uh, opportunities. Uh, the biggest challenge was the trade barriers that were set by many countries. I mean, other than the war that was, trade war that was going on between US and China, uh, a lot of countries uh, uh, went into protectionism mode and they started increasing duties on vegetable oils and fats and to promote and to encourage uh, local local production and uh, and harvesting. Uh, even though they are suffering a lot of shortage in the market and it has caused the local prices to increase uh, significantly, uh, yet uh, we have seen some countries have uh, stood the grounds on these duties and they are not willing to reduce them. Some countries, they will reduce them when they need to and some they have maintained such we have seen in uh, many countries. Um, particularly uh, West Africa and uh, India. Um, we have seen weaker demand due to drop in per capita consumptions in oils and fats. Uh, it's not that uh, people are eating less, but uh, because people are eating more eating at home, so there is less oil consumed in restaurants in, uh, and, uh, and hotels. And uh, also due to unemployment, uh, people tend to save. So we have seen shifts in demands, uh, for example, from uh, uh, soft oils into palm oil. And in palm oil sizes, we have seen uh, a change in consumer behavior from buying five liter to three liter or three liter to one liter. And in some countries, even 250 mLs. Uh, so people are trying to save as much as they can and uh, becoming more health cautious. Uh, and finding alternative uh, or safer ways uh, to eat. Uh, diminishing demand from America due to lockdown and travel restriction. Um, we have mentioned this before. Because of the lockdown, uh, there, was, uh, we ha there was diminishing demand from the hotel sector, uh, catering, and uh, uh, restaurants. Um, the, the the increase in the price of vegetable oils has made it less attractive to import. Uh, so people, uh, they will result into looking into alternatives, uh, alternative sources, whether locally or in the regional uh, region, regional countries. Uh, we have seen this in CIS countries where they used to import palm oil and then they shifted into other oils, which they import from uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, we have seen it in uh, uh, Africa where they have uh, reduce the imports of uh, uh, or shift it into other oils such as peanut oil and uh, seed oils and so on. 
and uh, we have seen also uh, uh, shifts in demands in uh, other oils in uh, in other countries as well. Uh, the general increase in the price of goods have caused uh, credit crunch all over the world. Um, the, as we have mentioned, the price of palm oil has doubled, and this has caused uh, importers and uh, buyers to have limited uh, or tight, tighter cash flow than they used to before. Therefore, their, their buying quantity has uh, dropped. It's not that the demand has uh, dropped that significantly, but uh, due to the rise in prices, um, they have to... Uh, they need uh, more funds in order to have the same size of business. And this is not only for oil importers, this goes to, into uh, confectionaries and uh, uh, other uh, palm oil users, uh, where the cost of goods have increased their production cost, and it, uh, it has uh, brought down their production capacity to some by 50% and some by 30%, and, and so on. Now, uh, the next we have to address is the rise in container freight, uh, which has increased tremendously by more than 200%. Uh, this had many impact on uh, on the purchase pattern and on the export of uh, vegetable oils and fats. Mainly, uh, the demand for uh, packed uh, vegetable oils and fats. Uh, we have seen a significant drop in demand for uh, vegetable oils and fats in packed uh, consumer uh, products uh, from December until now. And, uh, and that is because the price of these packed products became more expensive than the locally produced uh, oils uh, at destinations or in neighboring countries. Um, uh, the increase in freight has also uh, created a credit crunch uh, for the consumers and for the importers as well. And therefore, the demand has been uh, ha has dropped for packed products. Um, not to say only it has, it may, it may not have dropped, but a lot of customers have chosen to wait until the freight, com the freight rates come down. And also they have asked to defer shipments, uh, hoping to get better freight. From the, but from the way we see it, uh, we don't see that the freight uh, rates will come down anytime soon. And if this goes on, uh, we will see uh, a greater economic setback, and we will see uh, countries going through uh, even, especially exporting countries, going through even a deeper recession. Now, with every challenge comes an opportunity, and some say every challenge is an opportunity in disguise. Let's see why. The higher seed oil prices made palm oil relatively cheaper for consumers. Uh, we have seen increase in demand for palm oil in retail uh, sizes more than before. Um, usually, uh, palm oil um, mostly is exported in uh, bigger packages or in bulk, but now we have seen more demand for retail uh, sizes, um, especially uh, in pet bottles and in jerry cans from one liter up to five liters. Also, we have seen mergers that have been established between uh, producers and exporters and distributors at destination market. Uh, due to the travel restrictions, and uh, it became more difficult to reach uh, uh, and to find new buyers. So we've seen a lot of companies appointing agents at destinations in order to market their product and increase their sales or at least maintain uh, their uh, business. Um, another positive note, we have seen uh, some countries uh, starting to build their own uh, shipping fleet uh, in, in order to mitigate the freight issue. And I strongly believe that each country have to have their own shipping line and container fleet in order to safeguard their economic stability and growth. Another thing we had uh, last year, uh, there was uh, the central bank have uh, dropped uh, interest rates and therefore the commercial banks as well, uh, they have dropped uh, the borrowing rates, which have encouraged spending. And that encouragement in spending has also uh, led to a lot of uh, uh, fund managers to come into commodities and particularly palm oil and other vegetable oils, uh, whether in physical market or in futures market. And it has uh, this speculation also played a role in spiking up the prices on uh, vegetable oils. But uh, the better side of it is that a lot of uh, people are coming into the food business and, and hence it has increased the demand for vegetable oils. And it made the cost of uh, doing that business uh, cheaper.
Um, we have seen more companies investing in e-commerce uh, and uh, digital marketing. And I believe uh, the way forward is to establish a digital platform uh, to market uh, our products, uh, especially Malaysian palm oil. Uh, MPOC have created that digital platform, but uh, I need I, I believe more work needs to be done to make it uh, more accessible to consumers and to importers. And I believe it will be uh, more reliable, more genuine than other uh, uh, websites that uh, that are common websites, which a lot of uh, uh, non-genuine uh, buyers exist. I believe uh, a platform endorsed by MPOC or Madrid will be very uh, productive and very uh, efficient. We will see more stimulus packages and incentives by governments to boost their economies and, uh, and SMEs. And this will help uh, uh, people to go through this recession and it will help people maintain their ongoing business and, and also enter into new ventures and new businesses. Um, since the announcement of the vaccine, uh, some borders started to reopen and uh, uh, tourism have uh, slowly started uh, to reopen again. And uh, therefore, the demand for Horeca started to come back. And this is, uh, and uh, you will see more of that for months to come once the vaccine has reached more countries and uh, the rate of the contaminations have dropped. And the best thing we have seen uh, last year is that the antique uh, palm oil campaign has uh, quieted down. Uh, I think mainly because uh, they had uh, more things to worry about than uh, to look at uh, on how we do things. Uh, but yet, uh, we as producing countries uh, should not let our guard down, and we should uh, keep on uh, uh, promoting and uh, uh, and advertising our, our products and its benefits, and uh, challenge all the. Uh, anti-slogans that uh, are made against it. All right, I would like to conclude with these points. Uh, there was a lot of talk on what is going to happen with the prices, where is it going, where is the market going. I would just like to make it uh, clarify. Nobody knows the future. We can only uh, analyze on day-to-day -day basis based on the market situation. The market as it is, we now, whether it's palm oil or, or other vegetable oils, there is a drop, a slow in production. There's very limited stocks, and there is a very tight supply. And therefore, we would not expect the prices to come down anytime soon. Um, we should see in the second quarter. I mean, uh, we don't expect the, the for the stocks to replenish before the third quarter, but we will see in the second quarter how the situation is, and then maybe. Uh, our uh, predictions will uh, be different then. But for now, we see that the price will maintain, prices for vegetable oils in general will remain bullish. And for palm oil, it will average around 3,200 ringgit per metric ton this year or $800 per metric ton. Uh, number two, the demand for commodities as a more lucrative business compared to other businesses. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have seen a lot of people coming into palm oil as a more uh, or vegetable oils business as a more lucrative business as the demand for food and beverages. Uh, it's always there and it's always increasing and not decreasing. Uh, number three, uh, as I have mentioned, export countries need to have their own shipping line to safeguard their uh, economic interests and economic sustainability and growth. Uh, number four, we will see more partnership between producers and distributors around the world. And uh, I believe uh, um, as a producer, uh, this, uh, this is uh, something that needs to be done in order to safeguard your business. Uh, invest more in e-commerce and digital marketing and create a digital, digital platform for your business to reach out to your uh, customers and to expand into further markets. And last but not least, uh, create awareness about palm oil and its benefits uh, and, uh, and its uh, uh, contribution to the society and the well-being economy and for the overall food sector around the world. This is just a small introduction on our company. Uh, we are uh, palm oil producers and exporters. Uh, we've been doing so for the last 30 years. 
We do um, uh, various packages in all sizes. Uh, we export to over 60 countries around the world. And we are uh, located in Malaysia and Saudi Arabia. And we have uh, overall capacity of uh, 50,000 tons a month production. If you'd like to hear, if you'd like to receive daily updates on palm oil trends and prices and outlooks, uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel. As you can see it on the bottom right corner, our Telegram channel, and that'll be all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, I think we have about 25 minutes to uh, do a quick, quick Q&A, and we have had a very active audience. Um, according to our last update, you know, our webinar was being seen by more than 200 people in the participation. And uh, there is a lot of questions coming up, so we'll try to jump into it straight away. Uh, KP, can I throw the first question at you? Uh, one of our delegates want to find out, in fact, uh, a few questions are uh, about this. The CP production is likely to go up both in Malaysia and Indonesia. What will be the impact on the price? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for your question. Um, so the CPU production in Indonesia, Malaysia this year um, uh, is actually um, based on our production outlook this year. Indonesia, Indonesia production is actually will uh, rise or increase slightly. Um, and for Malaysia, it's actually will, will drop uh, slightly because of the some challenges uh, due to the adverse weather and also the COVID-19 uh, caused the labor shortages. Um, so basically, in short, uh, the palm oil production this year, what we see is still below potential. Um, and how how's that? How how is the impact on the production to to the to the price this year is um, basically what we see right now. The the fundamentals are still very healthy um, because of the inventories in both countries in Malaysia, especially in Malaysia, are uh, very low, critically low, uh, almost at almost about um, the second lowest level since like 2004 uh, during January 2021 or last month. So this actually has provided some support uh, um, for, for the palm oil prices. But going forward, um, the palm oil production, uh, what we see uh, could be uh, um, maybe pick up a bit uh, um, during during the second quarter or third quarter. There's a basically there's a um, uh, basically the palm oil production will pick up during the Q2 and Q3 on seasonality. So um, and also uh, on the external front, like Brazil, um, the 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 this one the soybean soybean will also uh, will introduce to the to the market. So with all the supplies coming in uh, during the Q2 and Q3, so basically they will put some or cut some pressure uh, to to the palm oil market. That's based on our views, and also based on our um, technical analysis, as I show in 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 my slides just now. Um, there have been some uh, bearish indicators, uh, um, so uh, such as like the MACD uh, MACD crossover and the RSI. Uh, um, and and that's all actually um, probably should warrant our attention. Uh, maybe going forward, um, we believe that the palm oil prices may uh, gradually weaken uh, in in the coming months, especially towards the Q3. But in the short term, um, in in terms of the short term, palm oil prices is still supported, as you can see right now. Um, the palm oil prices still bullish. Okay, still uh, uptrend. Uh, but that's uh, basically is uh, mainly mainly due to the external external markets like soybean oil uh, futures. As you may already aware now, is uh, still on the rally, challenging the, the new peak. So that's uh, lend some supports to to the CPO prices. Um, so basically, this is my um, first answers to, to your question. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ahmed, um, now, you know, you started saying that, you know, 2020 was the worst year that we've seen in the recent history. You know, honestly, the first couple of months of 2021 are looking that, not looking that great either. 
but fingers crossed the vaccine rollout is there so how do you think that you know the horeca sector will bounce back and uh, uh, if it does what impact will this current high prices will have on the demand that we were anticipating that this uh, uh, opening of the horeca sector will generate Ahmed, we have no audio from you. Uh, honestly, Faisal, I believe that the demand will not change by much. The only demand uh, change... Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I was saying that we will not see much uh, change in demand this year from last year. Um, the only change in demand or increase in demand that we will see is from uh, the rise in population. Uh, overall, uh, Horeca demand, I mean, we have to see if uh, how long this uh, vaccine uh, rollout will take. Uh, some are saying it will take two years uh, for the whole world to be vaccinated and it will take seven years for this pandemic to 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 go away. So we, we can't actually know when the uh, when the borders will be open and uh, travel restric restrictions will be lifted, and when will the demand for this uh, horeca will come back? But uh, what I have mentioned that there is an increase in horeca demand. It was due to the lockdown uh, when it was seized or eased in some countries. Uh, restaurants were allowed to reoperate, so the demand came back for that sector. But an internal tourism in some countries is allowed, and therefore hotels reopened and so on. And but until now, we have seen a lot of catering businesses are not operating, so there is not uh, much uh, uh, catering for airlines or catering for schools or uh, companies. Yeah, it's still on the downside. So I don't see much change this year compared to last year. Yeah, I, I thank I you. Hope that you. Answers in the fact, question. You, uh, I'm glad that you covered another uh, subject. But yeah, one of our uh, delegate was also asking about the national vaccine rollout. That what immediate impact will it have on the market? And like you said, and we agree that you know this is something which is going to take at least two to three years for it to have any significant impact when we start feeling safe to travel again, and the travel industry and the horeca industry gets back to its normal pre-COVID days. So moving forward, one of our uh, yes, of course, it will uh, have a positive what is the impact uh, of GE and three and. Um, yeah. All right. So moving forward, uh, the one of the questions Sorry. was, what is the impact of uh, GE and three MCPD on palm oil import in EU? Um, um, I'd like to address that. Basically, I think industry and major players are well prepared for this. Uh, they have had the, uh, uh, you know, uh, levels we were prepared for it, and already they are being supplied into the EU. So we foresee that moving forward also, uh, the industry is prepared, and uh, it shouldn't be a major uh, factor to limit palm oil exports to EU. Uh, would either of you like to add something to it, uh, Emma and KP? Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. The impact uh, of uh, uh, 3MCPD and GE in the EU market here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, um, so basically, the EU has set the, this one, the new food safety measures uh, to limit uh, to limit the, the this one, the intake of a 3MCPD and also the GE. So basically, this will... Um, actually will set the barrier for the palm oil imports. As you may already know that uh, in, in some like refined palm oil, there's actually will consist some the very high level of the 3 MCBD and GE. Um, so so in, in order for the industry to address this, they may really need to um to re-examine their 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 this one the refined palm oil process. Okay. Um so to to actually to lower the 3 MCBD um, levels in order to meet okay the requirements of EUs. So 
um, that's actually for right now, um, as Mr. Iqbal say, uh, in, in the industry, they are actually, they are quite well prepared for this, but there are still some many, many uh, party, uh, producers are actually still um, striving to uh, to meet the standards. So uh, in the short term, I believe that um, probably um, um, there are still some like producers may not meet the standards. So um, it will curb some palm oil imports. Okay, if they really, um, how to say, to have 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 to really um, really take care of it. So yeah. So in short, so yeah, that's that's all my <sighs> explanation. To to address your questions. All right, thank you. Yeah. KP, uh, I'll stay with you on this because this has also been uh, a, a question that has been asked by a bunch of our participants. Emma, yes. Now, I would just like to add, uh, in general business practice, uh, we should always cater to the customer's requirements. But uh, sometimes the customer has to look at his own uh, uh, needs as well, uh, in general, and its uh, own uh, benefit. Um, if this will uh, lessen the supply of palm oil to this uh, to the EU or uh, to to Europe in general, then they have to shift to alternative oils which have even higher uh, MCBD and all this level. So it's uh, and it will cost their own uh, business to shift from Europe to other countries in order to be able to mitigate this uh, issue. So they have to look at their overall uh, benefit before, I mean, uh, making such uh, strict requirements on uh, our products. But of course, we will strive to produce and and cater to the customers' needs as much as we can. But there has to be some uh, balance uh, between what can be done and what can be done, and balance in volume uh, as well. And you can set a, a premium for all products. We can set premium for certain products uh, or standards for certain products, but not we cannot generalize on all products for certain industry or for certain usages. And uh, second thing is that. Uh, if a customer demands a customized or additional or whatsoever uh, standard of a product, then he has to be willing to be to pay the premium for that oil. That's all I have to say about that. Completely agree. Yeah, thank you, Ahmed. And then very valid point. So I completely agree and those that you know, um, although industry is striving for what the customer wants, uh, and uh, if this is how it is, then you know. Uh, uh, our palm oil producers are, uh, uh, will be hopefully ready to meet all the requirements. All right, there's one question which has been asked by a few participants. Uh, KP, I'm going to come back to you on this. Uh, the palm oil gas oil difference, which is between $400 and $500 right now, how much is it going to impact the blending mandates? Okay, so thanks for your questions. So in short, the POGO has remained between uh, the Pogo spread has been remained between the 400 to 500 uh, US dollar per tons for quite some time already. Um, I think since uh, since the second half of last year, the CPO prices surged okay uh, until until to the very high levels right right now, and also the the gas oil prices uh, remain under pressure for quite some time until recently. Uh, we see some like uh, gas oil and all the mineral oil prices pick up a little bit or recovering. So, um, so will will this pogo's uh, very huge spread between the pogo CBO uh, and also the gas oil will cause any problems uh, for for the countries? I my question my answer is yes. Um, um, let's for for example, okay, uh, with this very high pogo spread. Um, uh, many countries will actually need lots of money to 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 pump inside or to to subsidize into the fund um, to fulfill the blending mandates. I thought take, by taking uh, Indonesia as an example, um, initially Indonesia, okay, they they will actually will roll out the B40 this year, but uh, recently they they actually delay or they postpone the B40 programs. Uh, because of the very high pogo spread, and right now the the uh, Indonesian government still continues the B30 mandates uh, by raising the 
um, the export levies to to very high levels as well, to around two hundred fifty five dollar per ton. But last year it was actually around fifty five dollar per ton. So so it's uh, actually um, increased quite tremendously for for the this one the export levies in order to support uh, the biodiesel uh, branding programs in Indonesia. So uh, for Malaysia, um, actually, yeah. our BNT yeah, is also putting on hold and in because they want to um, prioritize the economic recovery. So uh, some of the programs also has been postponed to, to, to next year for Malaysia. And for European countries, um, by contrast, they, they raised some biodiesel mandates, okay? Um, so, so in in Europe, okay, what we see that uh, probably parts of the palm oil imports are actually uh, benefited by by their rising biodiesel mandates in in the Europe. Um, yeah, so so, but for China, um, by contrast, I think uh, because of the very high pogo spread, uh, some of the uh, biodiesel market in China has actually slowed down. To a very very low levels, so yeah. So so in short, um, yeah. I think the very high pogo spread has actually caused has really caused some problems uh, in 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 our economic and also okay. the biodiesel yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I'm glad that we've covered another question, which was a follow up question to this. That you know, Malaysia and Indonesia. Yes, Malaysia. I think. Uh, the 2020 implementation will be further delayed, uh, like you just mentioned. In Indonesia, we hope that B30 there seems to be quite committed on it. So even that would support a lot of supply questions. Uh, there was a question on the EU, uh, on one of my slides, when, you know, the phasing out of subsidy on biofuels in EU, will it impact the prices and will it create an overproduction crisis? So I would like to address this, that, you know, there might be some temporary impact on the price. Uh, although the phasing out period, according to the um, uh, Delegated Act, is from 2023 to 2030. But certain countries have announced, like one country has announced that they are uh, the early adoption of this mandate. So yes, there is a temporary uh, impact on the price. And in my opinion, there would not be an oversupply crisis because the demand for palm oil has grown in many other regions and many other products. Uh, one case being the higher need for, uh, uh, you know, with this COVID, the, the hygiene and the oleochemicals demand. And also the biodiesel mandates in Indonesia and Malaysia will be key in managing production and supply. So I hope this would uh, uh, um, answer the question that was posed to us. Uh, Emma, I would like to come back to you. One very important question, the point that you raised was the logistics, that containerized cargo has seen the price, number one, go up uh, in, insanely. And secondly, there's also an, uh, a severe shortage of containers. Is this, and also you pointed out that, you know, a lot of demand has shifted to consumer packs. Is it going to have any impact on the Ramadan demand and supply? Oh, uh, overall, uh, we will, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that the consumers are, or importers are waiting for the freight rates to drop in order to place the orders. But what happened the last two months is that there's a huge shortage in uh, destination market. So uh, they will soon come back to the market and uh, they will uh, to, to stock up for uh, Ramadan season. And they have started to do so now. So, uh, and they are paying the price, but uh, they will not be able to sustain uh, this high levels for so long. I mean, uh, the, because they are still struggling on how to pass this additional cost to their consumers, and even uh, producers are uh, worried about how to pass these extra charges to to the uh, customers as well. I mean, uh, those who have palm oil as part of their ingredients, um, so food ingredients. Sorry. So uh, this uh, this has caused a lot of uncertainty and a lot of. Uh, um, how to say, uh, uh, doubt uh, and uh, whether to wait or whether it's going to come down or that, and that has slowed down the, the demand. But uh, we will see yes, less demand than before for Ramadan season, but it will there will still be demand for, for this coming month. 
Yeah, great. All right. Um, all right. I think uh, we'll take probably one last question. Uh, we have been alerted that you know we are coming to a close of uh, our seminar. So there was one um, question raised that. Is EU also using, you know, we're talking a lot about the horeca sector and how palm oil is the key ingredient. If EU is using palm oil in the horeca sector, so the answer is yes. In 2019, an estimated of 550,000 metric ton of palm oil was used in the horeca sector in EU. However, uh, rapeseed oil still is a major oil used in horeca. Okay, I want to squeeze in one more, and I'd like both of you to uh, give brief answers to this. One of our delegates has just posed a question, when would we uh, uh, see ending stocks in Malaysia and Indonesia to start to rise in 2021? Uh, KP, can we go to you first? A quick one. Um, yeah, I think, I think yes. Okay, uh, I believe the palm oil inventories will will rise. Okay, uh, when when there are more when when the the production pick up, especially in the Q2 and Q3. Okay, so and also, um, but but I believe that the palm oil inventory is still uh, below average levels, so that will keep the palm prices supported. Um, as you may already aware that yeah. the, in January January 2021, Malaysia's uh, palm oil stocks okay was the second lowest level uh, since 2004. So, so I believe it going forward, okay, uh, um, yeah, the palm oil inventory will slowly or gradually pick up, okay. Um, yeah, that's that's what I believe. Yeah, right. Emma, what's your take on this? Uh, I totally agree with uh, KP. Um, the stocks would not replenish uh, before the third quarter of this year. Uh, as we have seen uh, shortage uh, spillover from last year until now, um, a lot of uh, refineries are uh, operating at a much less capacity due to the shortage of uh, and availability of CPO. So we will not, uh, and this will take time for the stock replenish as importing countries are still buying CPO from Malaysia due to the uh, difference in duties between Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, it still made Malaysian CPO relatively cheaper, even though we have uh, an 8% duty on export. Um, so there's still export of CPO going on. And at the same time, there's a shortage in the market for the refineries here for the local production. And it, this will take some time to for the stock to replenish. Last year, we were predicting that it will replenish in quarter two, but this year, I think uh, it will not re replenish before the third quarter of this year. So as Mr. KP said, yes, the price will remain supported until uh, uh, sufficient stock, uh, we have sufficient stock uh, uh, inventory of palm oil. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, KP. Um, I think we have really come to the end of our allotted time, although there were a lot of questions son. that we could have gone to. But uh, I think I'll just go back to Julia to uh, wrap up for us. Yeah, thank you very much, Faisal. So a big thank you to you for moderating this Q&A session and for your presentation. Big thank you also to Ahmed and also Kian Pine for joining us today and for their insights and presentation. Uh, many thanks to the audience who um, has joined us today. And again, as I said at the beginning of our webinar, uh, the recording uh, will be sent to your uh, emails. Uh, you. Uh, left uh, when you registered at the webinar. So again, thank you very much for joining us today and have a lovely day. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Bye.